I'm so glad horror comics are back. Um, uh, with so many books coming out now, and they seem to be pretty popular. So I I do comics for years for Marvel and DC, stuff like Superman and Spider-Man and X-Men. And uh, I loved all that, but I, I got out of comics several years ago and did a lot more work in advertising and some film. Uh, but recently, I, I really miss comics. I thought I want to get back to it, but I don't really want to do the superhero stuff anymore. Uh, I really feel like I sort of lost touch with that audience. And things change so much that, you know, if you're out of the business for a few years, you're just lost when you come back and you try to figure out what's what. But I always want to do horror comics, so I thought I'm going to find a way to do some horror stories. We ended up just publishing uh, our own comics and creating the monster version, which this year we hope to expand quite a bit. Uh, more of the negotiation will be out. Uh, there will be four books in all of uh, Flesh and Blood. Neil and Neil Vokes, if I didn't mention him before, he's the artist. And uh, Matt Webb is doing the coloring, and it looks, looks phenomenal. Uh, so each, each book is pretty self-contained, but there will be a four-book series that kind of tells one big epic story. It goes through decades, and it starts in like the 18th century, or 19th century, I guess, and ends in the 1970s. Six years ago, Neil Vokes and Todd Livingston, I did a book for Image called The Black Forest, uh, and it was a, it was what you know what they call a monster rally. It was uh, uh, took place in World War One, and it kind of it was a mix between the universal classic horror sensibility and German expressionism. And the uh, book was really really popular. It won the Rondo Award for best horror comic, and, uh, but it, it really wasn't down to my system or Neil's system. A couple years ago, I don't even remember how we did it. We were a show or something. I don't know what we were doing. And we just sort of talked about, like, we loved Hammer films. We loved all that British horror stuff, too. And they were, like, these amazing uh, characters. And they were more grounded sort of in reality, in, in a sense, as much as a reanimated corpse and a guy that drinks blood for a living, you know, can be grounded in reality. And um, we, you know, we thought it was a mi missed opportunity that none of those characters with that sensibility ever got to meet each other. Um, and it, you just sort of knew that you had to do it. And it wasn't like we were in, going back over the same territory we had in the Black Forest, because it's, it's a completely different sort of approach. And um, I, it's funny, there's a, a review that's not out yet, but I've sort of been privy to what the reviewer's saying, because he's actually writing an article that sets up the review. And he talks about the fact that Apparently, human beings have this need to sort of create mythologies, or we, we need to understand how parts fit and how characters fit, and that's why we ultimately, his theory is that's why we ultimately go towards these rallies where Dracula and Frankenstein, or in this instance, that's Carmilla. Um, Flesh and Blood starts at the climax of the novel, Carmilla, and she's killed, I'll give you this much, she's killed. And even though the one gentleman who saved his daughter, the other guy lost his daughter, they're both really pissed off. And so they hatch a plan and they break a certain infamous renegade scientist doctor out of 